Hello everybody indeed, welcome to Metanorn's Mini Talk for Gargantia on the Virtuous Planet for episodes 11 and 12, Supreme Reign of Terror and Moment of Decision. I'm Jero, joined by Fosh. Hey, what's up? Min. Hello. And Smiley. Yeah, hello. So it's good to be back on the, on the Metanorn's Mini Talk. It's been a couple weeks and a pretty eventful couple of weeks for Gargantia as we start off with Commander Kugel, who we saw at the end of episode 10, we saw exactly his mecha, uh, which we know is Striker X something something numbers returned. <laughs> and uh, so we, so at the start of, we're, we're, I'm not going to talk about 11 and 12 separately, we'll talk about them together because of you know, the Kugel stuff, it's kind of pointless to talk about them separately. <laughs> so at first we believe that Kugel is alive and that he... He has an endemic disease that forces him to stay in his cockpit. Also, Chamber assumes that there, it's something that could be used as a sign of power to not really reveal himself to his people in, in the same way that Red has with the, everybody that he's ever met. And he asks Red to help him with some missionary work to enlighten Earth. And this includes the uh, the assault uh, on the Gargantia fleet, which is planned, and of course Red being attached to those those people re- rejects that, and he actually uh, decides to challenge Kugel to fight. Yeah, I thought it was interesting seeing Red kind of like you know take everything into account and like okay something doesn't add up. I mean, this is not what I've been taught since I've been here, and he always he makes the things where he says like you know this is not. The, the Galactic Alliance were on Earth is different. And that, that was kind of interesting to see. Right. His time on, on Earth has really has really showed its effect because I think previously, you know, he's always talking about um, the you know the ways of the Galactic Alliance and now he's talking about, you know, defending the ways of the people on Earth and he, his argument is that, you know, this is their planet so they should they should live however they want. And also, I should add on a side note that Assault on Gokrentia is not too far away from Attack on Titan. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, Maybe that'll be the spin off manga. Uh huh. <laughs> so, Red becomes a, a Hideals, right? Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> or the Titan, the Hideals become the Titans. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that, uh, you know, as you said, it shows that Red's become human, sort of, or become like, like an Earthling. Um, and I guess that we first really saw that in that reveal episode when he found out about the Hidea's uh, origins, uh, his reaction to uh, killing the, uh, I forget her name, but the one in the sea. Uh, that guy's daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Elaine Matsumoto. Yeah, there you yeah go. Elaine. Um, and now here, yeah, as you said, he's actively rebelling against his commander. Um, to protect, well, what is just a city that he was didn't know about until uh, probably just a few months ago, if that. Right. I think it's it's also worth noting that even before all of this, we saw the check mm-hmm. of Chamber. You know, if it was okay, mm-hmm. you know, he asked Chamber. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, can you win against Strike? I love the, that part of the episode. <laughs> and Chamber's like, like, I don't know. He yeah. tells him, you know, well, <laughs> can I go on ahead and attack my commanding officer? And then Chamber finally says, you know, that's up to you, you know. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> you you're, you're, like you're, the, you're the pilot. I mean, you do what you want to yeah. do. But it's kind of funny. Getting to the, the fight that those two have, uh, Red does Chamber doesn't quite measure up to Striker, which is why Red would have asked that question. But he does use a sort of a, a gravity attack that kind of just goes crazy and he was just probably hoping that he would hit the uh, the steam pole like he did and uh, sort of the sort of the surprise reveal there is that Kugel's already dead and that striker has basically been running things uh, and you know we gotta assume that he probably has been dead from the start yes I'm well, wondering too well yeah I wonder if he has been dead from the start though if uh, cause if the striker, which I'm guessing is you know a chamber equivalent, the, the that AI, it's you know it's manipulated an entire population of people to creating a cult. Now, did did it come up with that by itself and mm. start it, or did uh, Kugel start it then you know die from that illness that they were talking about, 
and then you know just continued on from there. That's a either... thought I had. I'm sorry, you were finishing. But, uh, no, yeah. Either way, it's one thing is that this um, now we don't really know how long this cult's been around, do we? That no, it because uh, Kugel's body was looked like it was you know mummified and its head you know just fell right off as soon as the uh, helmet mm -hmm. came off. Yeah. So. Like, you know, how long has he been dead? How long was he alive before he got here? Or before he died? You know, I, because there's this whole time gap between when, uh, in the first episode, when um, Red warped in and then appeared in Gargantia, that leaves a lot of room for uh, yeah, things to have happened. Yeah, that's the thought that I had about Kugel, whether he had programmed this into Stryker to sort of carry out this mission, this enlightening of Earth, but you look at what uh, what Chamber did with the big reveal in Episode 9, where he sort of claimed it to be propaganda, where I kind of think that these, these, uh, cham Chamber, what's the, uh, shoot, I'm blanking on the name of, uh, Machine Caliber, to program something like this in the event of this event happening, uh, in, in this case, Kugel dying and Striker being left on planet Earth. Yeah, I was thinking that, or it could be, because we don't really know all the different people that are on Earth right now. So these worship people could have been a regular cult by themselves and seen this metal thing fall from the sky and they all make start worshiping it. Mm -hmm. Like it's just God or something. Because it is very powerful when they see it fight against Chamber, which is like you're saying. I think he regarding, probably couldn't really win. <laughs> I think regarding the timeline of things, at least, most likely. Because we know Kugel went back to cover for the retreating machine calibers, I guess, or Galactic Alliance troops. Uh, and then, you know, the portal closes, Red gets caught in that. I'm thinking he probably didn't survive the encounter, you know, because, you know, they were on the retreat already. Mm -hmm. uh, so he probably died then. Then he kind of somehow went through on Earth. I don't know how. Maybe just, his unit just kind of floated through the portal or something. Uh, and we, we, we don't really know exactly how long. Uh, Red has been on Earth, but according to Stryker, you know, posing as um, the commander, um, he landed on the opposite side of the world. You know, we we don't know if we can trust what the Stryker is saying, but right. you know, that's that takes a while to travel because you know, they all they have is these large ships that just follow currents, and you know, you don't know where the currents go on really. Uh, so, I think it's pr it's possible that the whole thing was all thought up by Stryker and. We know that I feel like that Striker is kind of a, a higher up unit compared to Chamber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's definitely got higher you know combat prowess. It's for the commander of the unit or whatever you know army equivalent they have up in space. Um, so potential. What I'm wondering, what if it's got some sort of directive, you know, additional directive from the Galactic Alliance, you know, some sort of motive behind actually doing all of this as mm -hmm. opposed to Chamber, you know, who's been kind of relatively neutral. All things considered, right? He has been. Yeah. And they also did a report that uh, Striker had more power reserve saved than mm -hmm. uh, Chamber, so that kind of gives the Striker a little bit more leeway than, than Chamber right now. And they said it was coming from an external source. I didn't quite gather well, what they were meaning by that. Well, that was Chamber's theory, anyway. I, yeah, I wonder if there's going to be a, another reveal next episode of how he was uh, he managed to. Um, produce power for it like have they explained what power system runs those no they haven't because because mm -hmm. i mean his uh, uh chamber has been going on for a while without a charge so mm -hmm. uh, the, you know looking at the movements he's making i it's got to be nuclear for mm -hmm. anything that efficient it, and but if it's nuclear then like are they charging right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah or i mean if it's nuclear, they're both going to have so much excess energy anyway that it wouldn't really matter. So mm -hmm. I would have guessed it's it, they'd use solar because they're in space most of the time, but I uh, guess not. That's, that would be my guess as well, <laughs> considering there is no visible, you know, charging mechanism aside from, you know, you know, sometimes there's sunlight, sometimes there's a star nearby. That would be yeah. my guess. We don't know how far along their solar technology has come. I mean. For us, solar technology is a long ways away from powering a laser firing mecha that can manipulate gravity and fly through space. Yeah, well, this is generations after they figured out how yeah. to bioengineer humans to 
go live yeah. in space and the uh, space elevators. So, I'd so for all we know, it could very well be, in fact, solar power. Yeah. If, I was to say, if anyone can figure it out, probably Pinny can probably figure it out. <laughs> Seems to be the, the tech guy that knows somewhat how to build things. Yeah, so we could talk about him and also Rackage for a, uh, a few moments. Uh, we, we see Pinion. Basically, <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, Rackage sort of brings him in and he's pretty much forced to, to join up with this sort of cult like people. They even paint uh, uh, something on his face and they give him this machine, this uh, sort of iPad like. Size device that can see the inside. X-ray glasses. And, yeah, <laughs> and it's really funny. It's kind of funny in a way how he's so quickly interested in that, not even understanding the situation that he's in. Right. Like, well, I was gonna say can that. See the inside of technology. Because like so, eleven, when she brings him in, he's just like, "Oh, this is cool," and he doesn't realize you're being roped into something bigger. Yeah. <laughs> something mm -hmm. dangerous. He's just like a kid at heart <laughs> wants to play with right. big toys, you know. Pretty much. He's like, "Oh, new toys," and just doesn't care about what's going on around him. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least he started. At least he started caring eventually after mm -hmm. seeing, you know, people uh, go swimming. <laughs> human right. sacrifices. <laughs> yeah. 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 The the religious stuff is uh, is uh, really interesting, and that's what got Red sort of just decided to go up against Kugel was seeing all those people being sacrificed and one that had purple eyes which brought him back to that flashback that we see from him at the the alliance scene uh, a clone yeah, cause, cause or a younger the, brother getting the new people cold. they're kind of like i'm oh, sorry i'll say the new people they're kind of like him that if you have no purpose they get rid of you mm -hmm. no job skill yeah. they get rid of you also just about rackage uh, we would i would guess that after being beaten by red she came across uh, Kugel and this cult and joined them then. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, that would make but sense. They were flown very, very far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good point. Team Rocket <laughs> style. That makes sense. Right. Somewhere, so uh, one would guess that they encountered them pretty shortly after that. And uh, yeah, and now she's there and planning a, a little rebellion and she's gotten yeah. some help. I mm -hmm. imagine she was probably bribed to join, like, you know, We'll give you all this treasure if you join. So, okay. She's probably yeah, intimidated, or... just like the uh, fleet, um, uh, Pinion's fleet, or yeah, the guy. Right. And also, and... Yeah, at this point, she was just defeated, and probably mm -hmm. just her and her uh, minions, her two what, uh, slave Yuri, Yuri slaves. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, she's, uh, she's gone against Chamber, so she knows what one of those, you know, flying mm -hmm. Yumbaros right. can do. <laughs> yeah. But knowing that Red and Pinion would be able to help. That's what sort of mainly gets her into to rebelling. So it's almost kind of uh, Red and Earth versus Kugel and Stryker and this uh, religious cult. Yeah, the freak religious, religious nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see what else from this episode. Anything else from this episode? Uh, it's, it's worth noting that. The religious cult has a lot of the, uh, the I guess they called it ancient technology, ancient treasure, whatever, whatever the terminology is. Mm -hmm. um, I, wa I wonder, because now we've, we've mentioned previously if it's possible that the cult existed before uh, Kugel and Stryker, whichever was in control, uh, arrived. Uh, maybe they did in fact have a cult around this ancient technology, uh, maybe not as extreme, you know, going as far as uh, sending people swimming in, in uh, body bags, but, mm -hmm. but uh, maybe Stryker saw that there was this connection oh, to right. the Athletic Alliance and kind of exploited that to uh, its advantage. Yeah, that, that would be a plausible way of building up, or that he didn't have to build up the cult from scratch after landing. Mm -hmm. that, uh, he just, uh, or he or the uh, AI just hooked into it and took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I found it interesting. I mean, that, you know, this is a Urobuchi show, and, uh, you know, he loves the really um, unsubtle kind of metaphors and, and lessons and such. So we got this cult that's clearly, you know, this um, meritocratic, uh, super. Uh, severe 
unforgiving uh, community where everyone is judged based on their abilities versus Gargantia where uh, Red has been spending most of his time, which, you know, it's the complete opposite where it's everyone's happy, joy, joy, helping each other. There was that scene when it started raining when Red remembers how different it was on Gargantia versus uh, all the cult members. Whereas on Gargantia, you know, people were running out in the streets and collecting the water, really happy, celebrating. And this cult, everyone's just like standing still and like looking at the sky somberly. It's, mm -hmm. yeah. it's time, time get, for yeah. sacrifices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> time to get rid of some light, light in the load a little bit there. <laughs> yeah. It's clearly, um, you know, Butch kind of. Oh, get, yeah trying to get yep, this message playground. across, <laughs> making a parallel and, you know, Definitely. showing, compare and contrast, all that stuff. I'm gonna yeah, go it's off cool because you, you get to see Red's point of, Red gets to see both point of views, you get to see the cult people and Gargantian, so he's like, yeah, that's why he makes the decision, like, yeah, it's not right. Yeah. I'm gonna go off on a bit of a tangent here. Now, I mean, you use the word merit, uh, meritocracy, however you pronounce that word. Uh, I don't know if you guys are still watching uh, Devil Survivor 2. That show is getting yes, pretty I am. disastrous. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, 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 mean, I never started. Let's think about this. Yamato is all about meritocracy, and he kind of looks like, you know, the, the Galactic Alliance people. Maybe uh, Gargantia <laughs> is the world that he reimagines when he gets to Polaris. What do you know? Uh, Gargantia yeah, is the, connecting the, all these shows. Ika Musume, yeah. Attack on Titan. <laughs> yes, good girl. <laughs> <laughs> They're all crazy because of the uh, melting person there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. It's, it's like the nexus of this multiverse. Mm -hmm. oh, spring anime. Yeah, spring 2013. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Sounds like uh, some weird fan fiction right there. Uh, we could also mention Melty, who helped in sending a message to Gargantia, flying like, a really long way just on her surf kite. Yeah, and her little thing to Red, she's like, oh my god, he noticed me. <laughs> <laughs> did they mention how long a distance it was? It took it her overnight, at they least. Did. And yeah, by the end, she was just so exhausted she fell off, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, although, I, I mean, they couldn't really make it look that awesome because it's just her flying in space. Yeah, I felt like it was kind of weak, actually. It wasn't much of an indication of passage of time. It just felt like, you know, cut to her and then suddenly she's falling off for a, <laughs> yeah. for a reason. And it's like, oh, she was tired because it was all overnight. <laughs> yeah, they could have they, done a better job there. Uh, and then Amy just swoops in, saves her. I'm like, okay, that's cool, <laughs> I guess. No Urubushi yeah. death here. <laughs> and yeah, I was I like, mean... waiting for the fall shark jumped out of water. <laughs> that, that, that's sort of a pet peeve of mine where people catch people from like insane distances and know, don't right? decelerate slowly. Uh -huh. It's just like, as soon as you grab them, they're safe. Doesn't work yeah. that way. You just rip their arm off. So... Yeah, your arm. <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking about it too. Like, there's a moment where Red falls and Chamber saves him. Oh, yeah, that too. That one's a little more believable because it's yeah. a robot that knows like human limits, mm -hmm. so it could conceivably do that. And it has a should, hand should, that can grab him. Yeah, it, 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 it just took like a page him. from the Iron Man three. I mean, they did in that movie. They did a pretty interesting scene, but I won't spoil that. So. Uh -huh. People <laughs> falling and like gravity and all that. It's kind of cool. uh -huh. that could work. <laughs> uh -huh. Now we're bringing in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, this is this is Urobuchi. He, I think, mm -hmm. he loves using like Hollywood movie style uh, setups, tropes, what have you. So we saw that a lot that in Psycho Pass and we're definitely seeing a lot in Gargantia. Mm -hmm. What a world. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have only got one more episode left of Gargantia. And kind of interesting how with the situation that's going on right now that the Heady Owls, they've kind of taken a back seat because they can't be the enemy because, you know, we're dealing with the Galactic Alliance sort of fighting each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we will see you next week for the final mini-talk for Gargantia. I'm sure there will be lots to say about that episode. So, for Fosh, Min, Smiley, I'm J-Row. We'll see you next week for the finale. See ya. Bye. Peace. Come
寂しいな